For the first time in its history, the museum blacked out its popular Today's Front Pages exhibit, replacing it with pages featuring the hashtag without news and the photographs of 14 journalists killed last year being added to its journalist memorial. They represent the 80 journalists the Committee to Protect Journalists says died last year while performing their jobs. I'm also hugely grateful to be here when so many of our colleagues and friends are not. The keynote speaker, AP correspondent Kathy Gannon, said it's only a miracle she is not on the list. She was shot and wounded while covering preparations for elections in Afghanistan. An Afghan police commander opened fire on Gannon and her colleague Anya Nedrenhaus, a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer who died instantly. Gannon herself endured 15 surgeries and faces at least one more but she is determined to return to the conflict zone. I want to go back, I want to report. I have lots of stories in my head that I want to do both in Pakistan and in Afghanistan are very interesting and very important stories in, to, for me to, to do. The museum's Jean Polisinski says without these people, the news from places of disaster and conflict might not have gotten out. Maybe at all, and certainly not with the quality and with the depth and completeness that they provided. You know, we, we may know of a natural disaster, we may know of a conflict zone, we may know of the Ebola crisis in Africa, but would we know all of the details? Would we know the ramifications? Would we know, frankly, of the human suffering, the human angle? Many freelancers were among the journalists who died last year, since many major media companies and news agencies are turning to freelancers to cut costs. Among these independent journalists, James Foley and Stephen Sotloff who were executed by the self-styled Islamic State in Syria. Satloff's mother talked about a message he smuggled out before he died. Everyone has two lives. The second one begins when you realize you only have one. These are the words my late son, Stephen Joel Satloff, wrote during his 13 months of captivity. Stephen began to accept that he would not return home that his first life he had relished and lived to the fullest was coming to an end. His second life began. He urged his family not to grieve for him, but instead to honor him by cherishing the freedoms we have. The CPJ says 11 journalists died last year in Ukraine alone, among them Vecheslav Veremi, a reporter for the Kiev-based newspaper Vesti. As this video from a Ukrainian television station appears to show, he was assaulted by a group of armed and masked men whom he had reportedly filmed from a car in downtown Kiev. The journalist memorial in the museum now bears the names of 2,271 reporters killed while doing their jobs around the world, dating back to 1837. Joy Wagner for Anusha Vetsian, VOA News, Washington.